What's up, bro? You looking at that domination line? He is heading for the water. What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So I haven't combed my hair, I think, in like, I don't know, it's the holidays, so. How many days since before Christmas? Many days, I really don't care. So in today's video, I'm gonna have a huge announcement, but I'm gonna put that at the end. I'll give you a time signature if you just wanna skip ahead to that. Um, I did a little bike ride through the neighborhood today, and you know, I'm pointing out some common problems that I'm seeing in the lawns here. I got mostly Zoysia and St. Augustine in this neighborhood. Um, it's not anything earth shattering or whatever, but what it does is it gives you a little bit of sunlight, gives you a little bit of fun. I'll put some music to it, hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope those of you with St. Augustine Zoysia learn a little something. And then I'll also give you just a quick update here on the front lawn. In fact, we'll just do that now. Also, I need to take down my Christmas lights today. A lot of people in the neighborhood were doing that, so. You'll see, I'm gonna show you another angle at the end of the walk and talk, but that needs some furt bad, and I haven't been irrigating very well. This over here, though, is looking great. If you guys will remember, this is the palmetto. This is my very favorite St. Augustine grass, and you can see it's really dark now that I put the 901 on it. Um, the area here, really the entire middle here was struggling, and it's starting to kind of come back now, or what should I say, even out. Just like I knew it would. However, we, we're going to talk about red St. Augustine, and you'll see this area here, this is where the red is. So that'll come up a little bit later in the video as well. But overall, it's looking good. It's starting to, you know, it just needs to fill in a little more and get a little bit more even, especially now that our temperatures are back up into the 80s during the day, 70s at night. It's perfect. This palmetto is going to go nuts. I may even fertilize it on New Year's Day. So that's a question I've been getting a lot is, hey, Alan, I've got areas of my St. Augustine grass that are turning red. Does that mean it's disease? Uh, and the answer is no, probably not, actually. What it means is, is whenever we got into the 40s, which we did a couple weeks ago, and it was in the 40s at night every night for several days, uh, whenever that happened, the areas of your St. Aug that were the weakest or that were regrowing after a mow, they're the ones that'll turn that little bit of red. And what it is, is it's just, it stops producing chlorophyll. And so when it stops producing chlorophyll, the grass can't be green anymore. So what's interesting is the color it defaults to is that red purple. Now, if you stopped irrigating completely, it would go completely dormant and turn that brown color. However, I've still been irrigating. So therefore I haven't had that issue. It just stays red. Um, as it starts to grow again, which it's doing, the next time I mow it, the red will cut off and everything will just pick right back up. But again, this is South Florida. If you're in Central Florida or whatever, if you stop irrigating, it's just gonna go dormant, um, and that's okay. Of course, those of you even further north, I mean, yours is gonna check out and go dormant just from the cold anyway, but you still should try to get water on it at least every other week or so, get a half inch down, um, you know, cause the soil isn't asleep. So even though the grass is dormant, you still wanna keep some irrigation in there, um, just so that the St. Aug doesn't, you know, have big dead patches when it does start to warm up again. Now, in some cases, the brown spots, they actually could be some disease. It could be rhizoctonia, which, you know, that definitely hit a lot of lawns. It hit my zoysia over on the other side. Back a couple weeks even before that, we had uh, some cooler temperatures, like, I don't know, I think it was like 50s or 60s at night, but it was really just overcast with no sunlight and humid all day, and rhizoc came in. So the thing about that is, is if you're cooler now, it's gonna stop, the rhizoctonia will stop, but as soon as things warm up, it'll start back up again. The key here is to understand, really, no matter what your grass type is, but definitely for lawns like down here in Florida where we don't typically go dormant or our dormancy is very short, is that you get disease problems during times of weather change. So coming out of summer and into winter, right? Fall, which is what we're in now, and we're in winter, and when temps, you know, when temps and weather conditions do this in the winter, you'll get multiple times of kind of in and out. Um, and then the other time is, you know, coming out of spring into summer. Those are your two big, you know, disease windows. So that's when you're gonna wanna do the bulletproof strategy, which I can link to that below. But so that's kind of where we're at. I'm fine, I've actually treated for disease not long ago, so I don't need to treat again right now, but I may do a little touch up here in a few weeks. Yeah, I definitely am taking my Christmas lights down today, or at least all the ones on the ground here, because I actually think I'm gonna try to enjoy a mow today if I can, that would be wonderful to enjoy a beautiful mow. I know I promised you guys sunshine, look at that. I don't know, a lot of possibilities. You can tell I'm kind of scrambling for content. I've been doing a ton of writing and uh, getting things rewritten, getting things ready for the season here. So um, also realize that I need to start dieting, which is why I might have a little bit of, you know, you think maybe that mustache on the shirts, maybe looking like an underwire for the bro.
All right, now I'm gonna show you hog damage. These houses back up to some really thick woods. And what the hogs will do is they'll look for brown spots in the lawn because they think there's bugs there and they'll dig. You can see they root around and just tear stuff up. They're looking for grub worms and stuff like that. And you can see there's the thick woods right behind that they come out of. They come right into this lawn and they must be finding something. You can see a close up one right here. So there's a common misconception here with that. Um, people will tell you, it's kind of similar to what you'll hear or see up north uh, with grubs. And people will tell you, well listen, if you don't want the hogs coming and tearing up your lawn, what you need to do is get rid of the grub worms or grubs. And if you get rid of the grubs, the hogs won't come. And people will say the same thing up north about moles. They'll say if you want to get rid of moles in your lawn, you got to get rid of the grubs. That is not true. These are opportunistic animals and they're not stupid. So they know if they see a mostly green lawn with brown spots in it, that there's probably some insects there or something they can eat. So they're more looking at it that way. And that's the same thing with raccoons tearing up your lawn up north um, or moles or whatever. So if you eliminate one of the food sources, it doesn't mean they're gonna you know, not come back. The best way to keep the hogs out of your lawn is to keep it consistently green across. If you do that, then they're not gonna look at it and go, hmm, there's probably something under there. Does that make sense? Now, if it should happen though that they do start coming and you realize that you do have grubs, then yeah, they're gonna keep coming. They're not stupid that way. So you do need to get rid of the grubs and eventually they'll figure it out. But part of that would be, again, to get your lawn repaired, get it looking good again. So the, the best defense there is to never allow them to come there. So don't make your lawn look like a smorgasbord to them. Make it look beautiful and green like something that they don't wanna mess with. So let me just show you what it looks like when you have irrigated St. Augustine grass next to, next to non-irrigated zoysia grass. This is what you get. Now our temperatures have been pretty chilly in the 40s for a week or so. Here's an irrigated zoysia lawn here looking good. By the way, let's go ahead and make one observation here. So here's what the palmetto looks like. It had 901 green start put on it. You guys saw that video where I did that. This is how good it looks. Remember, I'm gonna tell you that palmetto does better in cold weather, and we just had a stint in the 40s, and, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. So look at how nice and dark green that is. And now here's the Pro Vista. Now, I don't know if it'll show on camera, but it's not as green. Some of this has started to try to go a little bit more dormant, is what I'm getting at. Just some areas in there. And this could be that it's a slower grower, so maybe it won't green up as fast, you know. It's, it's great that we don't have to mow it all the time, so they say, but maybe it also means that it's going to green up slower. I don't know, I'm just, you know, talking, but... This, the truth is, with that cold weather, this did not have the same response that the palmetto did. So, doesn't mean one's bad, one's good. This is exactly me showing you why I got two varieties of St. Augustine, so we could, you know, check these kind of things out. Also, you'll see, look at this Bermuda popping its face up in here. This is crazy. Look at this stuff. Look at that. Look at that, man. Huh? I got something for you, wild Bermuda. Yes, I do. I mean, don't get me totally wrong, it is a pretty color, though and thick like I like them look at that big old nut sedge coming in there too I got sedge hammer for you here's a look at the zoysia and it's tough the way the Sun is right now sorry about that but definitely some rhizoc right in here and a little bit up there and a little bit up there um, you can I don't know if you can see that but uh, I put that disease control down and it did not spread anywhere out there So that was good. This is also you know, it's in the shade so it's gonna be wetter longer um, But on top of that this also did do a little bit of yeah, see that's definitely rhizoctonia all up in there But if you look this also had a couple spots that turned red too, you know from the cold see that see the tips turning red there So just one of those things here look that is not disease, that's just from the cold. Also, if you look up here, you'll see where I was practicing with some sedge hammer in here to get rid of the nut sedge. You know, you always wanna be careful. Now the cold weather helped me, that's for sure. Um, but when you first get something new and you spray weed control on it, you do a little section. So I did a little spot right here and sedge hammer works pretty slow actually. It takes like, I don't know what, 
12 to 15 days to work, maybe more, 20 days. Um, and then when you couple that with the cold temps we had, it takes even longer. But we'll do a full video on this, but I've got to kind of let the zoysia sit right now. It's kind of shut down, um, but it'll start coming back now that we're getting warm again. So we'll start kicking it back up and we'll get the third video out here pretty soon, sometime into the new year. Okay, let me just go ahead and give you the big announcement and then I'm going to end this and wish you a happy, super happy new year though. Uh, but the big announcement is my podcast is starting. I've actually, I've actually already got one episode up, at least on the YouTube channel piece of it. Um, I've got much more to go to get the, the podcast completely launched, but it's easier and quicker to launch it on YouTube and every podcast seems to be on YouTube these days as well because you can choose to just listen to it or watch which there isn't really much to watch there now, but I'm not really selling it. Let me undersell it, but click and link in the description below. Go check out my podcast channel, Lawns Across America. Uh, and my very first episode is there. It is not perfect by any means. I've learned so much already, but I would love to get constructive criticism from you guys um, on the pace and you know that kind of stuff. The content is not there yet. It's not in its final form, but either way, click below, check that out. Lawns Across America, that's the official podcast. It'll be weekly starting uh, in February, and I've got a lot of cool plans for it. So if you click the link in the description below, you can go there and check it out. You'll get the full update on what that is. There are a couple tips in there. Some may overlap today, but either way, it was just me testing, understanding what the equipment feel like, what's the edit look like, what's the workflow kind of go. And just like everything, it's going to evolve and get better as time goes on. And again, as I kind of learn and understand what the audience likes, what you guys like, what you want to hear and how you want to hear it, and how you want to consume it and all that kind of stuff. So I do want to just say this channel is not changing. The Lawn Care Nut will still be having an episode every Sunday. And my idea here is just like when I added the newsletter last year, now adding the podcast, it should accentuate, it should dovetail off of the videos. It should add more context, more detail, more tips, more ideas, more thinking. That's really the idea of it. So don't think this channel is changing. It's not. Okay, y'all. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, it's a little bit later at night. You can see, see how it's dark back there. Um, I kind of ran out of footage there. I I'm sorry if I kind of came up short a little bit on the video today. Um, but I hope I did was able to bring you some some sunshine and, and that kind of stuff, some cheer today. Uh, I did want to just take this time before I get this editing done, because don't forget, Matt Martin's got his live stream tonight. Um, that's 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm gonna make sure I try to stay up late enough for that, which is not usual for me. But anyway, um, I just wanted to say, seriously, Happy New Year to every one of you. Thank you for a wonderful 2018. I hope your 2018 was full of blessings and joy and success and, and good things. And I hope that 2019 is 10 times that. I just, I really do. I wish you a beautiful 2019. And as always, I'm Alan Hayne, The Lawn Care Done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the lawn.